Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Denton, I want to focus your attention back on this discussion about when it was that you spoke with Mr. Delario about the publication of the Hulk Hogan sex tape video story. Now, I'd like to, Tim, if you could display the portion, just to give you the background. Last week, when the plaintiff was playing segments of your videotape deposition, you may recall this segment here, and that's what we're going to look at. Conversation on the fire stick. Was the office that uh, the Gawker Media folks were in at the time, was it a rather small office there in New York? <coughs> uh, yes, we were overcrowded. We were on the fourth floor of a walk up. Okay. You were on the fourth floor of a walk up, overcrowded with folks sitting upon one, basically sitting atop one another? Yeah, it was mainly open space, and so there weren't many places to have meetings. Okay. Now, the other thing is, you said you went out on the fire escape. Is Mr. or was Mr. Delario at the time a smoker? Uh, I think so, yes. Okay. Now, is, pardon? So, oh, sorry, smoker. Was it smoking, smoker, or smoke? Smoker. So that the record be clear, the question was, was Mr. Delario a smoker at the time? Yes, and I would occasionally have a cigarette also. Okay. All right. Now, as you sit here with us today, can you tell us for certain whether the conversation of which your recollection is hazy, was it before or after the October 4, 2012 post? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Now, you were asked before our break about the headline, and uh, if you could direct your attention, please, to page 212 of your deposition. And to place this in its full context, if you would look starting at line 25. You have it there at the bottom of 212? Uh-huh. Oh. Yes, I do. And then it, see this portion. Question. But in this headline, Mr. Delario tells his readers to go ahead and watch it anyway. Do you know why he did that? Answer. I mean, I think he's being funny. I think the meaning is relatively transparent. I don't think I can translate it. Question. Do you think he was, if someone, if a hypothetical reader had accosted Mr. Delario in the street with this article and said, gee, AJ, do you want me? Do you want me to watch this at work or don't you? Seems a little schizophrenic here. What do you think he'd say? Answer, I think we're all a little schizophrenic. We are all interested and we're all a little bit embarrassed about our interests. And I think he would probably say, say that, like, you know, you want to watch it, you know, you want to read this piece, so don't pretend. That's, I'm speculating wildly, as to what he would say. Do you see that? <coughs> yes. It, it, was that the full context of your, that discussion on that subject? Yes, it was. All right. Now, there's been all this talk about the top two stories in 2012, um, a piece of the related to royal breasts and the Hulk Hogan piece that was posted on October 4, 2012. Do you, sir, know, and 
can recall what the third most popular piece was that ran on your sites that year. Actually, you'd have to pull us up. I All can't right. remember. Let's do that. Tim, if you could pull up Defendant's Exhibit 541. 541. Oh, yes. Mr. Denton, if you would look there, you see the piece is headlined, I am Adam Lance's mother. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Do you remember that piece? I do, yes. Okay. Tim, if you could highlight the date that that piece ran. Oh. December 16, 2012, right? Ran, yes. ran late in the year, right? The third most popular story that ran on the Gawker site that year? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you something. Did this story have anything whatsoever to do with sex or sexual matters or sex tapes? Uh, no, it didn't. It was uh, about gun violence and actually more particularly about men mental illness. It was from a mother who feared her son could be a, um, a killer like Adam Lanza. It, it tells her personal story and her focus is on mental illness. Yes. Right? It tells the story of living with a child, a young boy, I guess he's about middle school, and how he can go from being great to being downright frightening. Yes, that's right. And that was an opinion piece. She shared her personal experience, right? Yes. And would you call, was that another commentary kind of piece? Uh, yes, she was putting the shootings in Connecticut in a in a different light, just showing that there was a it was a much wider problem, uh, and it should be looked at in a broader context. Right. And at the end of her piece, describing her personal experience, she makes a plea that we in this country turn our attention to these issues of mental illness. Right. Yes, she did. Okay. What was the reader reaction to this piece? Where were we? Um, Mr. Denton, what was the reader reaction to this? <clears throat> uh, it was an outpouring. I think it was the, it was the sort of story that uh, gets people talking and it kind of unearthed a, um, you know, there were others who said, me too. Uh, I think it was, a, it was a very, it was a profound piece. Okay. In this instance, the woman, who wrote her story, uh, Lisa Long. She wasn't a Gawker writer, I take it. No, she wasn't. Yeah. So this is like a, a guest opinion piece that one might see in the paper here? Yes. Okay. Happens all the time in publishing? Uh, yes, we look around the web and when we find interesting pieces like, like this, we'll absolutely commission them for the, for the site. Okay, let me ask you this. Let's shift our focus. Judge, I'm going to have to ask my question. Under the rule of completeness, I see objection.
before we go on, if you could pull up again um, Exhibit 541. Okay. If you could please go to the last page of the exhibit. Let me not be the last page. There you go. Okay. Tim, could you, yes, a little further down. But if you could, but you could move that up so we can see the last two characters. Okay. If you could bring it down a little bit, now down. I have a moment, Your Honor. Just to, there we go. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Let's look at the last two paragraphs of text. It says, I agree. There we go. I agree that something must be done. It's time for a meaningful nationwide conversation about mental health. That's the only way our nation can ever truly heal. God help me, God help Michael, God help us all. Did you see that? I do. Okay. Now, Tim, if you could move it up. There you go. You see, it says, Tim, if you could highlight, Lisa Long is an author, musician, and erstwhile classicist. She's also a single mother of four bright, loved children, one of whom has special needs. We published, with permission, from the Blue Review, a nonprofit publication affiliated with Boise State University that publishes a mix of scholarly essays and journalism. You see that? Yes. The original post can be found here. Oh. Yes. Okay. Now, I asked you earlier about the reaction you got from your readers. What, what was the reaction? Um, well, as I've I mentioned before, the interaction between writers and readers or the discussion amongst readers in response to an article is very important to us. It's a fundamental part of the internet. You know, and as with the unemployment series, this article you know, sparked a big conversation on our site uh, and more widely. Okay. And is your, in your judgment, is that a good thing? Yes, I, I think that's what the internet is here for, to <clears throat> allow people, you know, who have, um, it's one of the most important functions of the internet, to allow people to be themselves, to express themselves, and to connect with others in the same position. All right. Now, if we could look at, I think it was Plaintiff's Exhibit 61. Okay. You recall Mr. Turkel showed you this a little bit ago. I do, yes. Okay. And Tim, if you could blow up that graph just a bit. There you go. Okay. Now, what appears here. What are the dates on this? Sorry. Oh, sorry. The date. There we go. Um, January 29, 2015. Okay. Yeah. If you look at the bottom, the date is October 1 of 2013. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. So now back to the graph. This graph depicts not Gawker.com, does it? Uh, no, this is the audience for all eight properties of the time uh, internationally. Okay. In the U.S. and internationally. Okay. So what we, you were saying before is this 
is the whole of Gawker, all of the various sites, Gizmodo and all the rest, correct? That's right, yes. Okay. Let us look at plaintiff's exhibit 619. So this, this exhibit was run on, was it March 1st of 2016? Okay. There you go. Now, again, does this graph depict just Gawker.com? Um, no, that, that is the daily audience. Um, so. Um, around 4 million each weekday uh, in the United States. Okay. Again, is that for all the Gawker properties? It is for all the Gawker properties, All yes. the sites? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Durkell directed your attention to Plaintiff's Exhibit 2, which is the challenge, uh, the October 4, 2012 post. Now, you were here with the rest of us last week, mm -hmm. and I take it you heard the plaintiff, when he was on the stand, when he was in that seat, he told the folks that, well, he wasn't upset about the commentary. Did you hear that testimony? Uh, yes, I did. All right. And then his lawyer, Mr. Houston, he takes the stand, and did you hear him say that he too, they had no problem with the commentary, right? Certainly by now they have no problem with the commentary, yes. Right, okay. So they told us they're not suing over the commentary, right? That's the case, yes. No. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Uh, the principles are there as guideposts, and uh, generally, I, I feel that people will follow principles if you don't have too many of them. So that the key principles were to be honest, you know, honest about the facts, honest about one's own motivations in writing the story, uh, and to be interesting to connect with readers. Um, and we try to keep it as much as possible to that, <clears throat> rather than giving like a long, long list of requirements that would result in people probably not doing the core of their work. We wanted them, sorry, my, we, we wanted them to focus on the core of being a journalist, which is to put out things that are true and that readers would connect with and be interested in. How were the principles put into practice? Uh, the principles are put into practice in, you know, in every story. We attempt to do it through every story. And uh, the process is one of, I hope, continuous improvement. That it's through open criticism, you know, either in the comments on an ind individual article or on Twitter. Uh, or through open internal debate uh, that people improve. I'm not going to say that every single piece um, meets the highest of our principles or the highest of our expectations, um, but it's only by putting it out there, <coughs> responding to open criticism and evolving uh, that people get better at their job and we get better at our purpose. How do they apply to this part uh, I think the, none of the facts are really in dispute. One might not like the facts. We didn't create the facts. Um, they are all, as far as I'm aware, all true. Uh, I think uh, AJ Delario wasn't just honest in his reporting. He was honest about his own motivations, and he was honest about the motivations of the readers who would be drawn to the piece. Uh, and it was interesting. I mean, we're talking about it now. Uh, people were talking about it at the time. Uh, it's raised bigger issues uh, around the balance between free press and privacy. Uh, I don't think anyone could really dispute that it's been an interesting piece. It's painful for many people, you know, many people on the plaintiff side, many people on the defense side, um, but ultimately true and interesting and um, core to what we do. What was the unique user traffic to the Adam Lanza's mother article? Uh, I can't remember the number offhand, um, but uh, it would have been in the in the millions. Uh, stories tend to it's uh, they either break out and become the talk of the internet. Uh, or they don't. So it's usually it's it's either or. There aren't all that many pieces in the middle. And yes, sure, uh, people are interested in stories about celebrity and sex. Um, but they're also interested in stories um, about, um, in this case, a story about a terrible crime and a story about the issues raised by that terrible crime. Um, so. Interested, I, I wish there was a science to it. Uh, there are certain things that you can more or less predict are going to be interesting to people. I think the question that you're asking is what was the traffic? Oh, sorry, I, did, I didn't mean to go on. <laughs> I, I, have, I have been accused of being a little bit too wordy. Okay, thank you. Actually, I have one follow up on that one. Just to be clear, Mr. Denton. The Adam Lanza story that we showed, there was some confusion. That was republished from another journal or something, right? Yes. It wasn't original Gawker content, was it? No. We brought it to people's attention. All right. That's, that's all. Uh, the next question is the clarifications that the court would like to give the jury uh, that have been stipulated by the attorneys. One is to clarify that Gawker did not receive a second DVD and that Gawker did not run a second version of the excerpts for reasons unrelated to this lawsuit. Okay. Thank you.
and the question for you is knowing knowing of the Mr. Coken slash Mr. Houston cease and desist letter, why did you not ask your staff to remove the AJ Delario Coken video? I, I believe that the post remained, there was no new information in the cease and desist letter. Uh, AJ was already aware of the fact that um, Hulk Hogan had main, was maintaining that he had been secretly recorded uh, and uh, we consulted and uh, evaluated and we, did, we believed and, and I believe now that the piece had value, that it was true, it was honestly, it was a story honestly told. Uh, and uh, it was interesting to uh, millions of people. And, and to be clear, and hopefully not too redundant, at the time you watched the video or read the text, right? No. And, and be clear for a time frame, that's as of the time of the cease and desist, which was a day after the post. Uh, I can't remember exactly when the cease and desist came in, um, but yes, at the time of the cease and desist, uh, I had not read the post. Didn't you know that the Mr. Hogan sex tape topic was controversial prior to Gawker releasing the sex video post? Sorry? Didn't you know that the Mr. Hogan sex tape topic was controversial prior to Gawker releasing the sex video post? Uh, I, I personally was not uh, aware of how much had been discussed uh, about the sex tape. Uh, I, I don't tend to go to TMZ and The Dirty, uh, certainly not as often as AJ Delario and the people writing on Gawker. Uh, AJ Delario was a, a, aware of the fact that this was already in the news and there was already a conversation around the topic. As president and publisher of Gawker, why did you not view the video and make absolutely sure that your counsel was involved prior to the video post released by AJ Delaria? Uh, there's a standard practice here. Uh, AJ Delaria was the editor in chief of the site. Uh, he had autonomy as um, as far as choosing what to publish and how to publish. Uh, he was accountable, uh, absolutely, um, but I feel like he made the right call here. He used a sparing amount of video. He used an extremely sparing amount of sexual um, content in the, in the video, uh, and so I wouldn't second guess him on the publication of the story as he, as he published it. Do you believe that non-celebrities have the right to privacy in their own bedrooms? Yes, I don't think it's newsworthy uh, to do a story <coughs> uh, about a private individual with their partner uh, in the privacy of their own home. Would you say that sex is part of your branding of golfer? I think we write about what people are interested in. Um, sex is an important part of people's lives. It's an important part of celebrities' lives. And uh, yes, we write about sex, and it's probably one of the half dozen or a dozen topics um, that Gorka.com uh, mainly writes about. As the publisher, do you separate the written word from the video in terms of the First Amendment? Um, no, I don't. Uh, I think when they are, when the use of video, when the use of visual material is proportional to the text, to the words in the text, and when it isn't gratuitous, when it isn't just simply to um, elicit prurient interest, uh, I think that it's, um, it's right to cover a story in a way that connects uh, with an audience. If, if AJ had really been looking to maximize traffic on this post, he would have done it very differently. He wouldn't have bothered with the words.
Uh, yes, I was aware that um, that the story <coughs> which had been in the news was even more in the news after we did our post, and even more in the news after Hulk Hogan appeared uh, during his New York media tour, and even more in the news after the lawsuit. So you know, this is um, a story which began back in March of 2012. Uh, it's grown and grown. I'm going to check. Not as possible there, but I think he's answering more questions. I think he's confused by the question. Sorry. Could you repeat it? Would you have a follow-up? Yeah. And the question was, were you aware that the video, that the video ultimately showed up other places? That this excerpt showed up other places? Uh, yes, I was aware that it was being talked about and it was being um, displayed as part of those stories. Were you aware that Mr. Delario embedded links to any number of other sites in his story? Um, I mean, I wasn't aware at the time, but the normal practice is, yes, to include links to information um, and to images that are related to the story. Thank you. Any other questions from our journalists?
video was gratuitous, would you still believe it was covered under the first amendment? Uh, no, I wouldn't. No, Your Honor. And I know there was a, a second question, but he's pretty much answered it for us. All right, any other questions? All right, so at this point, kind of going to break the lunch. I'm going to ask you to please come back at 1.15. Break the lunch at 1.15. All right, thank you.